Hey guys, this is the second part of the British Brew Camp series. Make sure to watch the first one before watching this. Now let's move on to tier two, the platoon command post. First up, we have the Welsh lads from the valleys, the Royal Engineers. They cost 210 manpower and five population cap. They're very good at building emplacements, planting mines, building barbed wire, repairing things, and they're good at close range. Hailing from the Highlands in Scotland, we have the 55 cal armor piercing sniper. He costs 360 manpower and 9 population cap. Acts like a normal sniper, but also can do some penetration damage against vehicles. From the south of England, we have the assault officer. Very good in close quarters combat, costing 320 manpower and 8 population cap. Next up is the 6 pound anti tank gun, costing 320 manpower and 7 population cap. Onto the AEC Mark III 75mm armoured car, costing 280 manpower, 60 fuel and 6 population cap, effective against light and medium armour. Next up is our first emplacement, which is the Bofors 40mm emplacement. It is good against aircraft, light vehicles and infantry, costing 280 manpower, 30 fuel and 10 population cap, built by the Sapper Squad. And finally we have the 3 inch mortar emplacement, which is an emplacement which, which holds 2 mortars. It is very effective against all infantry targets, uh, costing 350 manpower, 8 population cap, and built by the Sapper Squad. So guys, to upgrade to Tier 2, you need to select your HQ, your Tier 1 building, and then click on the, this button here, which is Z, which is the Platoon Command Post Upgrade. It costs 180 manpower and 30 fuel. Once you do that, your Platoon Command Post will slowly build itself up. We got the speed ups, that's why it was so quick for my on my end. And you can see here we now have tier two built. It also comes with a 25 pounder, as we uh, talked about earlier. And as you can see here, we have the sappers on Q, sniper on W, the sort officer is on E, and R hotkey there for the six pounder. Right, onto the first unit, which is the sapper squad. So what the, what's great about the sappers? What do they do? So sappers um, act like your repairing unit, they can put down mines, barbed wire. They could also build a forward assembly and the mortar pit as well as the bowfalls. But before we get into the emplacements and the structures the sappers can build, let me just quickly go back to the, the base over here, the platoon command post, and talk about the two tech decisions that you can make. Right? The first being, you either, you've got to decide bet between the AEC upgrade or the bowfalls. You can't have both. So here we have both the AEC and the bowfalls. So the AEC first requires you to spend 100 manpower and 15 fuel. And so does the Bofors upgrade as well, okay? You don't have to pick these two upgrades. You could skip these all together and go straight up and tech up to tier 3. You don't, you're not required to tech to these to then tech up to tier 3, for instance. So if you wanted to skip that, save yourself some fuel, you might be able to get a faster medium armoured vehicle out later on down the line. But anyway, back to this. So if you were to select this, requisition the AEC, it would lock out the Bofors, as you will see here. Right? The Bofors that was there is no longer there, and now we can uh, only build the AEC. And if we go back to our Sapper Squad over here, we no longer build, can build the Bofors um, in the selection over here either, right? During a live game, this, this, this choice is irreversible, so you can only do this once per game. So now I've done that, I can no longer build the Bofors. But what you would normally do with the Sapper Squad is to build a Bofors, is we press that button, hotkey would be there, or the button would be there, and then you just place the Bofors down wherever you want. You can, you can get it to face a certain direction or whatever. So to build, uh, the, the first thing you might want to build maybe is a forward assembly. So a forward assembly basically act, acts as a forward um, re retreatment point. Uh, we'll just build it here for the sake of building it real quick. You don't I wouldn't normally advise ever building it in your base. Um, normally, you, on this map, for instance, you'd probably want to build it maybe here or behind this hedgerow here or here. You know, it's a bit forward, not too far away from your base. It's always good to have a forward base because that allows you to... Um, it saves yourself time to come back onto the battlefield, right? You always want to be on the front line holding the ground. But if you have to retreat your units off the field, it takes a long time to come back on if you have to go all the way back to base. If you had a forward assembly, um, then they can retreat to here. Now, to upgrade it, it to act as a, re um, a retreatment point, you would have to um, um, upgrade this ability here. But you can only do that once you upgrade to Tier 3, okay? But you can still build it right now once you get the sappers come out, okay? And you can still reinforce around it. You could upgrade right now, actually, medical stations, like so. Of course. Message received. However, this will allow, this medics will start to spawn here. Uh, three medics, and they'll go and heal people. Like, imagine, like, a um, Soviet base with, their, with the female medics. They're going around healing people. That's what will happen there. Now, if you upgrade the medical stations on this 
you will not ha you will lock out this. You can no longer upgrade the forward retreat point. So you'd have to build two of these to actually gain the retreat point and the um and the healing the healing medics. Here we go. They're starting to spawn in now. So there's your first medic, and uh, they'll start healing in nearby dudes. And also, uh, it does have a little a radius around itself where you can call in um coordinated fire, like so. And then that will trigger this base defense to turn around and start shooting at it. And again, if you have the tier three base built. Um, then you'll have the LR 25 pounder there, which will also start firing. But there you go. So actually, you can kind of drop down some nearby artillery to defend it, potentially, if you wanted to do so. Um, without needing maybe the, the infantry section with the, with the flares, uh, to drop their own flares, for instance, okay? So that's the, uh, the forward assembly. So, and then you have this, so the sappers here on the front line, what you want to do with them is you want to be wiring off enemy cover like this. So, the enemy base is over here on the right, so we want to wire off this right-hand side so they cannot benefit from cover. So that would be a good idea with using the sappers to do that. They can plant mines down like this. You know, on the general routes that the enemy is probably going to take to come and attack us. Um, another thing that the sappers can do. Um, destroy cover. Which is uh, the only squad in the game that can actually do this really cool little ability for free. It's a free little destroy cover thing. So if we wanted to get rid of some cover completely that our opponent can't use it. Um, so we come over here we, we would drop this little like, explosive device down. And uh, it will get rid of that cover there. As you see. Is this is also a very good ability to destroy, for instance, enemy wrecks. So if you've got a Panzer IV wreck, for instance, and you want to destroy it so those stern pioneers couldn't salvage it, you'd use this ability to destroy that cover. And also, if you wanted to up another route through the map, for instance, so let's say um, you know, on this north side of the map, okay, let's say there was an enemy in machine gun that was sat in this house and it was pointing this way, I might want to come over here and put down um, this little explosive charge and open up another flank route, like so, towards that house. So I can attack it from another angle, from this side and that side. So this is a very good uh, ability to um, to open up areas, make it, you know, clean areas. For instance, again, if we want to maybe put a mortar pit here, uh, right now, we could, you know, there's it, lots of rubbish in the way right there. There's lots of things. If we want to, so to clean the area up, we would get the sapper squad, and we'd use the, the explosive ability to... Um, get rid of all this debris and all this rubbish on the ground here to, to open this area up a bit more. And now, there we go, now we can build the mortar pit there because we've opened that area up, okay? Like so. So now the mortar pit costs 350 manpower to build. And if we press Z, you can see uh, on the mini-map it's uh, area of effect, so it can go all the way up to here. Okay, that's as much as it can barrage all the way up to this this, this far, okay? And um, it's just, yeah, it's amazing, honestly. That this mortar pit is really annoying to deal with. If this doesn't get dealt with, if the enemy doesn't deal with this, this will just, this will just keep wiping stuff constantly. It's just so, so annoying to get rid of. Um, and the way that you have to kill this, uh, people beat this, is by using LEIGs or uh, flame mortars or just trying to push it and burn it out and try and kill it. Um, so the important thing is when you're placing mortar pits, guys, is to put them in a position where it's hard to attack from, from the front. So I put it behind this hedgerow in this little house, this stone wall in this house, because it's hard for my opponent to come and try and hit it from this side here, right? Where they're going to come, maybe come from. This side over here may be a little bit exposed. At least I've planted it in an area where it's um, hard to hit at, okay? From one angle. So you always want to be thinking about that when you're planting your mortar pit. You don't want to be planting your mortar pit completely out here in the open like this, where, it can, where it's completely exposed. You always want to be trying to think, oh, maybe plant it behind this hedgerow. Or here, right? Don't plant, plant them completely open. Maybe here could be a nice idea because then you've got that hedgerow there covering it. And then you maybe put a machine gun like and Vickers covering that side. Maybe mine here, mine there. And then you've got that kind of mortar pit fairly well protected. But the mortar pit thing is, the mortar pit's a static thing. You can't retreat. And if you can't retreat the mortar pit, that means you need to have units covering it nearly all the time. Um, otherwise, you, you, you'll lose it quite quickly. So don't try and ever put it too far forward. What you want to do is have your mortar pit covering. Generally, a good idea is having covering a VP and a fuel point. So this position right now for this mortar pit is pretty damn good because, like I say, it's got the, the the shots, the cover from these these this this shed thing here in the wall. Be hard for enemies to get at it. Um, but it also can bombard, can bombard this VP. It can bombard the center VP, and uh, it can cover it covers a good portion of this fuel point in the north, and it recovers covers this munitions point. So this covers pretty much half the map, to be honest. This, this mortar pit from this one position. Um, so think about that whenever you're planting your mortar pits. The mortar pit itself can have hold fire, so it stops stop shooting. It could do a normal barrage. It also could do a smoke barrage, which I'll just show you guys what that looks like. So I'll just do like a, um, a smoke barrage in a little line here. 
Again, this is handy to do to, um, again, to stop MG suppressing you, cover, cover attacks, cover retreats, you name it. Now, the other thing the Mortar Pit has, it has a brace ability. So this is generally for all the um, structures, the Mortar Pit, the 17-pounder, the Bofors, all have this brace structure ability. Now, what this does is um, you, the crew stop firing. They become, they're not allowed to shoot, but they do take a lot less damage when this ability is active. However, it's very important. It only lasts about 15 or so seconds, 15 to 20 seconds or so, right? And once it's over, you can't initiate brace again for a, for quite a good while. So I'll do it here. So here we go, we'll pop it on. So 20 seconds you have brace for, and once it ends, you'll see that its cooldown is quite significant. So 55 seconds cooldown on the mortar pit. And that's a 55 second window of opportunity for your opponent to finish off your mortar pit if you've not been able to get there and repair it on time. Now, with your sapper squad, your sapper squad can repair this if it gets damaged, like so. However, it's advisable generally not to repair your mortar pits while they're re receiving uh, fire. Because if you are caught repairing, you're likely to lose the entire sapper squad and also the mortar pit as well. So um, best to just lose the mortar pit rather than try and desperately try and repair something and then lose a valuable unit like a sapper squad. So then you can repair it back up to full health. And this thing, and mortar pits and bow falls and all those kind of emplacements can gain veterancy. So as you can see, reduce the cooldown of the creeping smoke barrage. Experienced crews reduce the time between barrages. And veteran crews prepare the emplacement into a stronger defensive position. Becomes a bit tankier and has got more HP or whatever, right? And so that is the mortar pit. <clears throat> so what else can sappers do apart from um, repairing structures and tanks and things like that and the explosives? They've also got access to a heat grenade. So this is the anti-tank grenade um, that the Brits have. Um, so like you've got your Americas have got the AT rifle grenade snare. The conscripts have their, their AT rifle. Um, uh, Grenadiers and Volks Grenadiers have their Panzerfaust. Brits have their, their the heat grenades. AT, you know, it's basically the same thing as, an, as, a, as a normal anti-tank grenade that the conscripts have basically. And this is good against snaring light vehicles and other things as you've seen before in previous videos. So again... Light vehicles um, get stared immediately to a heat grenade, and medium vehicles and above, 80% health is roughly the amount of health that they need to be down to before an anti-tank grenade will actually crit them and, just, and damage their engines, okay? So here I'll just show you the heat grenade in action. So here we come in the corner, we spot ourselves a Puma, we lob the heat grenade onto the Puma, and as you can see, it does about 20% damage. So because we, we doesn't normally have an instant cooldown, but we're just seeing how many grenades it takes. There's about four heat grenades, will kill the Puma, right? And um, the, the, it's got a decent cooldown timer, um, as I'll show you in a second. So here's a, we'll have a full health Panzer IV over here. So I'll, I'll show you now that against a Panzer IV, a medium, a medium armor vehicle, we will not be able to instantly um, give it a damage engine. Even if we lob the grenade on like it's rare, you can see here it, it goes down to about 80% about health or so, and it's got about a 30 second cooldown, 30, 25, 30 second cooldown timer on that. Okay, so if you have two steppers though and firing and lobbing two grenades at once, you will get a damage engine on it, okay? And then, here's the wreck, as we said earlier. So we don't want our opponents to, to salvage this wreck and great gain some free resources, right? So we're just going to come over here and then pop down our destroy cover thing. And it will get rid of that wreck for us, like so. So our opponent can no longer use that. So, uh, that's, the, that's the heat grenade. And, uh, yeah. We'll go on to the 17-pounder later on once we get to tier 3, because you need tier 3 to unlock the 17-pounder. One last thing, something new, that is a tear-down emplacement function. So if you were pop-capped in a game, 100% pop-cap, and the mortar pit that you built is no longer being effective because it's like really far back and the front lines moved far forward, and you wanted to free up the population cap, you could press tear-down emplacement, and you could get rid of your emplacement if you wanted to, to get rid of it. And you can get rid of it fairly quickly, as you can see here. It's almost half completed then. There you go. The enemy have destroyed a forward emplacement. Like so. So you can get rid of it if you don't want it anymore. But generally, you're not really ever going to do that, to be honest. That's just a, and it's a nice ability to have in case you don't, you know, if, if you're playing like against AI doing like ridiculous 500 population cap games, you've made a load of more bits, you don't need them anymore. Yeah, that's kind of a nice ability to have. Okay, so that's the sappers. Um, and also, their weapons, as we said earlier, um, they're good at close quarters combat. They have Sten guns, so they're going to be really poor at long range. They're going to be fairly decent at close range. Um, they're not the best. Um, if you're up against Stern Pioneers or Panzer Grenadiers, they will lose. Um, but 
if they, um, you know, they they'll, they will do some DPS if if they're not focused down. And um, yeah, you, you don't underestimate them. They are fa fairly decent, um, but they they're not like the, the super best um, close range combat guys for the British. Those would be uh, the assault sections, which are in a commander uh, selection, the commandos, and the assault officer, which we'll go on into a second. But first, let's go on to the sniper. So here we have the Scottish sniper. Right, compared to every other sniper, um, he he's basically just the same kind of thing. He 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 snipes dudes. Um, you know, one at a time. However, compared to the other snipers, he does have the ability to do coordinated fire. So he can drop a flare, he drop a flare down. Ex this is exactly the same ability as your infantry section has. So if I was to quickly make an infantry section real quick. So this ability here, that your pyrotechnic supplied Tommies have. So it's 45 munitions and 45 munitions. It's exactly the same ability. So generally, if you're going to pick, uh, get a sniper up, maybe you want to just go med kits on your infantry sections. Um, to have you know to have more healing more readily available because you're, you know your sniper already has that coordinate fire ability and uh, as you can see here, I'll just lob it when he lobs it he does come out of cover so you've got to bear that in mind so he was not gonna, he's not gonna lob it and then stay cloaked he'll stay visible for a while longer and then he, then he will, will recloak after a, a short while but that you got to bear that in mind when you're lobbing a flare you do reveal yourself um, and once he gets fashion C1, so he's got a 30 munition ability right here, which is called Critical Shot. And depending on the type of vehicle he's firing on, um, it will receive a different type of crit. So we can see this here. So you can see that was just a normal fire shot onto the the, um, the Suka half dragon. It took about a third health off, so it's not too bad against killing things like that. Now if I was to... then that's just his normal firing. So if again, a normal fire shot will fire against the, the Kub Wagon here. And you can see um, we did about a fifth hit on that, okay? Now, if we were to pop on critical shot onto light, lightly armored targets, we actually damage the engine of these vehicles. I'll do it again. Kub Wagon. Okay, Puma. There you go. Stuka. Panzer II. Okay, so all these lightly armored targets up to the Panzer II will all receive a damaged engine. Now, if I was to target anything above that, See different crit they'll receive a different critical. So Panzer IV, they receive a turret jam, Oswind. And remember, that's only temporary as well. That that actually that will disappear after a short amount of time. And then we'll, we'll try and hit the Jagdtiger here. Ah. So the Jagdtiger actually stuns it. Okay. So as we can see here, everything light vehicle receive damage engine, all the medium vehicles receive. A, um, a turret jam, and the extreme heavy tanks receive a stun for a, for a short amount of time. So, um, there you guys go. That could, you know, using the sniper shot against light vehicles allows you maybe to quickly catch them. If they get receive a, a stun, um, then you might be able to, you know, these heavy vehicles, you'll be able to take them out. Maybe we'll get a ram in, that kind of thing. Again, damage engine allows you to kill them a lot faster. So, what the British sniper has available to it, it has that nice stun shot, um, which is effective in certain situations. Okay, guys, and we now go on to the Assault Officer. So the Assault Officer is a very good unit in close quarters combat. Every man has a Sten gun. Uh, and they're, they're a bit more durable than a Sapper squad as well. Um, and uh, they've got a couple of nice abilities here. So, but first thing, let's just talk about their veterancy. Um, the great thing about this squad is that veterancy 2, as I'll now show, combat veterancy 1 gives them. Uh, unlocks the vet recon sweep abilities. It gives you a recon in this guy. So if I just quickly go to turn the Fog of War off. Right, and I wanted to reveal an area I could to get the plane to go in a certain direction, so I can go. I can get it to go um, that way. Our plane will come overhead, which I don't think can be shot down. Yeah, so as you can see, that you can't actually see the plane here, even though we can see it on the mini map. So this is a type of recon plane that cannot be shot down, and as you can see, we get, it's giving us vision of the map. So this is great non-doctrinal recon that you can use to. Uh, in team games to give yourself, to give your allies a, um, a vision of the enemy so they can drop artillery and stuff, off map artillery. Efficiency 2, so that recon ability was 50 munitions. Um, so efficiency 2, they actually gain, um, increase their squad size so that you can reinforce them with a fifth man. If you wanted to, you could upgrade them as well with, um, with Bren guns if you wanted to, which will probably increase their, their DPS a bit, but I'd rather just maybe save my missions for something else because their DPS is all pretty damn good already uh, um, at the moment. 
And um, so you can see they gain an extra bodyguard is assigned by HQ and squad members are gained better weapon, weapon handling. Viciously 3 uh, become more resilient to small arms fire and gain increased accuracy. So, you know, it's gain, you know, as a, generally with all squads, they just get better as they get more veterancy. But that was the main th key thing there. Viciously 2, they gain that extra man. Now, the two abilities this guy has is a light gammon bomb. A little bit more effective than your standard meals bomb that your infantry sections can throw. Which is, um, you know, be good against clumped up infantry. You know, we'll be able to one-shot and wipe uh, a lot of things that's clumped up, potentially. Uh, we've also got heroic charge. So, if, for instance, um, I'll demonstrate this. So, I've got I've placed an MG over here, guys. I'm just going to show you what this uh, heroic charge ability does. So, you plant this. You can only... only if it works on one friendly squad. You can't do it on multiple squads. So, I'll just... Show you what happens here. So let's just get some more infantry sections here, just in the area. Let's activate heroic charge on this guy. So as you can see here, it basically increases their speed so that they can sprint a bit faster. So you might be able to get behind maybe a machine gun a little bit faster with your squad. That lasts for a short while. Unfortunately, um, this currently says no key with weird numbers on there because the developers or whoever was adding this ability, because it's, it's, it's fairly new, this. Um, uh, the assault officer for non a non doctrinal use into the game. As you can see, the officer raises his bodyguards to sprint, shoot more accurately, and better evade enemy fire. So actually, it's um, it's always worthwhile doing. Um, so it's because it's a free ability. So as you can see here, two squads next to each other. What the one with the ability is running a lot faster. It's got the aura, and it lasts about 10, 10 15 seconds or so. They gain the bonus from the officer, the bonus from the from the cover. So this would make them quite an effective fighting force. So one more thing about the emplacements, guys. You can actually put in, uh, a squad inside the emplacements and um, obviously they can gain the benefit of the cover. It also says on the description that if you do garrison a mortar pit, uh, it does improve its firing rate. But I just tested it and it didn't seem like it had too much of an impact on it. So it's probably not really worth doing it. But in the heat of battle, and you've got no cover nearby, jumping inside uh, a mortar pit with a squad could you know, be a good idea to give that squad cover. Um, the Bofors over here actually gains an ability when you put a squad into it. So here's the standard Bofors. And here it's got, you need, it requires a squad garrison in hold to do the suppressive barrage. So normally the Bofors has a very decent range. You can shoot up to about here. And a 360 degree firing arc, right? And it'll also shoot planes that come overhead. Uh, and it's good against infantry and um, light vehicles and also very decent against medium vehicles. Against heavy vehicles, not so much. Um, so we'll put the squad inside the um, the Bofors, and now we'll, we'll, when we do this ability, the suppressive barrage. So what I'll do is, you can, if I press Z, you can see that I can actually shoot a bit further with the with the suppressive barrage than my normal distance. So I can normally shoot to about here, right? But I can't here over here. But then I press Z, I can shoot up to here. All right. So here we have some axis infantry. I'm going to use the barrage now on top of the axis infantry blob, and you'll see here that I can now do it since I've got a squad in there. And then the the, the rounds will start raining on top of this infantry, and um, they become suppressed. Or pinned it and suppressed very quickly. Like so. And then... That's because they are not in any cover at all. But they do lose the suppression quite quickly as well. So... As you can see, it does some very decent damage to these units as well. When the shots land right on top of them. It does about three or four barrages there. And, uh, you know, in conjunction with other units, that could be very effective. So you go, that's the um, the Bofors barrage ability. So, for instance, if you get if this is getting a shot at by um, a pack gun from out, you know, and it can't reach it because the pack gun can normally outrange it, right? So you can see here, that's my range, and the rocket muffler can probably sneak up to about here and hit me, right? And I can't reach him from there. So if I go selection owner enemy, this will start shooting me over here now, right? And I can't I can't actually hit him here, but what I could do is I could use my barrage ability here to shoot shoot back at him. Any second now, here we go, then drop that on him. There you go, you can see. It's a good way for your bowfuls to, to, to damage enemy anti-tank guns and, and weapons from outside their uh, firing arc. And you can see we're actually winning that engagement. Quite handily as well. However, you just bear in mind the rocket weapon doesn't have any cover, right? So. And there is a big cooldown on that, about 50 seconds. But luckily for us, that rocket weapon can't hit for shit. So we're alright. Last thing, guys, I forgot to mention about the Royal Engineers is that they can upgrade um, for 30 missions the Super Package, which allows them to sweep mines. 
And also, they don't regain wire cutting ability because they have already access to destroy cover, which destroys barbed wire as well. On to the six pounder. So, as with all anti tank guns, takes out, takes out tanks. Um, very good against medium armor, light armor, and will penetrate heavy armor as well. The thing with this thing, it can hold fire. It can prioritize vehicles, which you kind of always want to do. You don't really ever want to shoot infantry because it's never, never really kills infantry that well at all. Uh, but the, the uh, this pa six pounder, what it does have is um, a veteran ability called rapid maneuvers, but it needs uh, obviously veteran C one. So what we're going to give it uh, veteran C one, and what this does is it allows it to move a lot faster. So this is how long it takes to turn around on itself normally. Okay, without the ability. Now I'm going to turn it the other way and activate rapid maneuvers. And turn around. This allows you to quickly maneuver your anti-tank gun to deal with incoming armor, as well as pick it up and move it a lot faster than usual. Look at them running with that. Absolute crazy boys. Okay. Right. And if I was to move it forward, and again, this is the normal speed. Move it back again. See how so much slower it is. So having this ability allows you to quickly reposition your, your six-pounder um, so either get a, you know if you want to doing an assault you could push it up really quickly with your with your with your your vehicles because they're obviously a lot faster so you, you know you don't want to leave your anti tank guns behind when you're pushing up forward or if you have to retreat quickly you could pop this on and then reverse back very quickly so it's quite a handy ability it doesn't have the armor piercing round ability like the American one does because its rounds are already armor piercing because the British know what they're doing right final unit in tier two of the platoon command post is the AEC what is great about the AEC it's quite mobile. It has nice wheels, it's got some decent range, and it can tackle lightly armoured vehicles and um, tango with medium vehicles and above. Um, thanks to its ability to be able to lop a smoke screen and its target tread ability. It also has hold fire and prioritise vehicles. So the smoke ability, as you've probably seen on many other vehicles, is the same thing. You just press Z, adds a smoke screen, so it stops enemy vehicles or whatever from firing at you and then it allows you to reverse away. Or you could pop it while attacking to stop the enemy from firing you again, so you can quickly zoom past them and get, get up behind them, okay? Now the AEC doesn't have as good, um, its range is worse than the Pumas, okay? So when you're fighting against a Puma, you need to try and use the terrain to your advantage here. So what I mean by that is like maybe hide, wait for the Puma to get close and spring out around the corner and attack it from, you know, from, from the sides or whatever. You don't want to really face a Puma head on with an AEC unless you've got support with like from an anti-tank gun or something, okay? So the AEC, um, its ability with the target trade is very handy against um, all types of vehicles. So I'll just put, um, we'll put out something big like, um, a, let's put out a King Tiger for instance, okay? We'll put it on hold fire just for this demonstration purposes, okay? So what we do is you come over to the King Tiger, and then what you want to do... Wow, a funnel up! Wow, that actually penetrated from the front there. That's very, very rare that you'll ever have an AC penetrate from the front of a King Tiger, but it can happen, as you've just seen, seen there. Right, so what we'll do is we want to pop on the target tread ability, which is, it takes a couple of seconds to work, but what it does, it, it, the first shot slows it down, and the second shot of the target tread ability, if it penetrates, will um, stop the vehicle from moving. Um, for a short amount of time. So there, the, as you can see, the general sh the general shots of the AEC don't really penetrate the uh, the King Tiger. So I was, as you saw, you know you can see why I was quite surprised when that first shot did actually pen. Um, but there you go. Um, so we'll get we'll get something a bit a bit easier to penetrate this time. But here we have it. So the AEC is going to open up. And you can see some decent penetration damage. Each shot does about I don't know about a fifth damage. We'll we'll add on now the the target tread ability. So that's the first one going in. So there you go. It's got a mobility damage for a second. So now it can. Now it's really. It can't move that quickly. It does. Um, it doesn't last too long. But as you can see here, if the AEC does get on the rear armor of a vehicle like this, it can take it out quite effectively. Uh, however, the, the AEC can only take maybe. Yeah, about two shots from a, a Panzer IV before it dies. So, um, whereas the AEC needs to do about five to kill it or so. Um, however, if you use the AC conjunction with other things like anti-tank guns, like I said, or, or cyber scuds with snare, you might be able to kite well with this. It does have better, better maneuverability than um, medium armor vehicles from, from, from the Axis, um, so you could use that to your advantage. It's also not too expensive as we saw earlier. It's like 280 manpower and 60 uh, fuel, so it might be a good unit to make to go around, you know, to go around the back lines, and maybe hunt down Panzerwerfers or Stukas in the rear, um, as it is quite cheap to do so.
Okay, and that is the AEC. Hey guys, thanks for watching this video. That that is the end of the second part of the British Boot Camp. There'll be a third video following this one, and it'll probably be either here or here soon. Um, and again, thanks for watching. If you did enjoy the uh, the video, please do consider subscribing. We'd greatly appreciate it. And um, so there's like 67% of my viewership on, on YouTube is not subscribed yet. So make sure to click that subscribe button so you're notified when I post new YouTube content. I also stream nearly every single day on Twitch, twitch.tv slash helpinghands. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll catch you later. Bye-bye.